In this video, we are going to take a look at sample libraries and sample players. Would you believe if I said what you heard just now is not played by real instruments, rather it's programmed inside a DAW using MIDI? Well, take a look. It's so good and realistic, right? There are two reasons for this. One, it's programmed by Mr. John Powell himself and two, instrument libraries. A wide variety of sample libraries are available but for this particular video, let's consider only the ones that are made by sampling real physical instruments. Here sampling just means recording all the possible sounds that can come from the instrument. A good sample library will even include the sounds produced by the mechanics of the instrument. So it looks like the clunk is actually coming from the keys, which is really nice and we want to keep that. We're going to hear some of the mechanics, but we're also going to get a nice rounded, baffled sound uh, from this wood. The information regarding all the recorded samples is then encoded into a single file. This file can then be loaded into a sample player, making it the virtual form of the instrument that the library is based on. The most widely used sample player is Contact from Native Instruments and the majority of libraries, both free and paid, are encoded in Contact to be used in Contact. The only problem is that it's not at all cheap, especially from the point of view of a beginner. There is however a free, stripped down version of Contact called Contact Player. This is how it looks like without any library loaded into it. We can choose which all sections of the plugin can be seen by clicking on this icon. If you don't see this browser section, enable it from here. And this browser section is where we can access our libraries that we have registered in this PC. In order to add libraries in here, we have to use native access. Now native access is an administration tool used to manage software products from native instruments and also those products which work with products from native instruments. To use such a product, we will have to add them in here. In order to add the products, we will have to copy the product serial number from their website and paste it here. After clicking on add serial, we will be taken to the installation process. Right now, I'm going to cancel it. So this is where we will be taken and as you can see I have four products that are not yet installed. These are all libraries. Yankin is from Native Instruments itself. So all we have to do is click on this install. But before that, if we click on locate, we can see where it is going to be installed. D sample libraries Native Instruments is the location that I chose. If you want to choose your own location, then you'll have to go to preferences from here and then change content location. That is where the products from native instruments will be stored like libraries and stuff. I'm gonna install that. While that's happening, let's fix these. Now Roxy Chord, Tape Choir, Thunder Drum all are third-party libraries. So the approach is a little bit different. Let me open up the file manager. Now I'm navigating to the directory in which I have kept their library files which I have downloaded from their website. I got this as separate zip files and extracted them to get these. Now if I open up the first one, Roxy Chord, we can see this particular file which is needed to identify this folder as a product. So I'm going to copy this directory and then go to native access, add library, browse, paste the directory that we copied. There we have it. So we are in that folder and if we select folder, we can install the library. This won't work if this is a different folder because this file is needed to identify it as a product. So let's install and it's done. I can do the same thing with tape choir. Tape choir is on a different folder. This one, select folder, tape choir, install, done. I'm not going to add the Thunder Drum library for now. Let's wait a bit so that Yankin gets installed. All done. Now let's check contact player. Here is Roxy Card. Here is Tape Choir. 
And finally, here is Yanquin. To add an instrument, we click on the instruments on the library, which reveals all the instruments. And we can just click and drag one of them like this. There we have it. Each library has their own user interface, which lets us control various properties of the instrument. And the different colors on these keys actually do mean something, which we can see in this info section. For this instrument, this is the playable range and this one is the articulations. Articulation dictates the method of playing the instrument. Let me show you an example. I'm going to click one of these notes while I play one note from these blue keys. Alright, let's try a different instrument, tape choir. We can replace the currently loaded instrument by dragging another instrument on top of it. Now here is the problem with contact player. Even though there are plenty of free libraries for the full version of contact, the number of libraries available for the player version is very low. If we go into the files, we might be able to load some of the libraries that are actually meant for the full version of Contact, like this Splash Sound Percussion Elements. We have to click on the Instruments folder and it is going to show the instrument files that we can load. If you have any confusion, just look for this icon. And I'm going to click the first one and drag it in. Here it is. Now here's the problem. Not many libraries meant to be used in the full version of Contact can be loaded into Contact Player. And the ones that can actually be loaded can only be loaded in demo mode which means it will only work for 15 minutes. Even a Contact Player library like the SC Thunder Drum that I already own cannot be added into Contact Player as it should be. You see how the UI is broken? It's also in demo mode and there is no sound output. We actually have its serial already added in native access, but we have not yet added its library. That's why it is showing like this. So a library will only function without any limit in contact player, only if it's available among these libraries. This project that we are in right now uses contact player in most of the tracks. Right now, I have muted all other tracks so that we can only hear the output from the tracks using Contact Player and you're going to hear how good Contact Player and its libraries can be. Alright, let's move on to the next sample player. This is Decent Sampler, which is free and has a considerable number of free sample libraries. A lot of the libraries are from this website, Piano Book, which is kind of like a community driven thing. And all the libraries that people upload in this website are free to download. We can click on this library and go to one of the categories to find some libraries. Like I'm going to choose Pianos. And it's showing all the piano libraries available. We can sort with these categories and also the formats in which the sample libraries will be available like Contact, then EXS24 and SFC. These are all formats. I'm not sure about this one. For the time being, they don't have a decent sampler format because it's a fairly new sample player. We can hope that this category will be added soon so that looking up for a compatible library will be easier. At the moment, we have to open up a library to see if it can be opened in Decent Sampler. For instance, let's try this Francis Bacon Baby Grand Piano. In its page, we can see there is a brief description, a video, then download formats, and demos. If demos are available, then definitely play them to check if the sound of the instrument is something that you would actually want. Okay, let's assume this is something that we would want. All we have to do is click on the appropriate format. In this case, it's Decent Sampler. One click and the library will be downloaded as a zip file. I already downloaded the libraries that I liked from Piano Book. 
I grouped all the libraries that can be used in Decent Sampler into this single folder. And now let's go into Piano and here is the same library that we just opened. This is the file that we have to load into Decent Sampler. But before that, if we look in the Samples folder, we can actually see the samples that will be loaded into Decent Sampler. These are all mechanical sounds, so you might have to pay a little more attention to hear them. Alright, let's use this library. We can either click on this file, then load, and then open the library by going into the directory from here. Or alternatively, we can directly drop it from the Windows File Manager like this. You hear that portion? I think it would sound better with a different library that I have in mind. Let's try that. It's called Broadwood. Let's use it. Oh, see this pedal noises? In this MIDI clip, we can see these tiny triangle things. I'm assuming that these are pedal inputs. So if we decrease all the other volume, we can actually hear the mechanical sounds of the pedal. Cool, now let's bring it back to normal. Okay, we need a little bit of note release. Cool. We have more decent sampler tracks in this project. If I open the first one, you can see that there is no instrument loaded in it. I wrote these MIDI clips to work with the piano above. So now, let's load some instruments into decent sampler. Obviously, the majority of libraries in piano book are piano libraries. But there are considerable number of other libraries like this coil library called Winter Voices. Let's try this second instrument. Now, uh, if we solo it... I brought the next one with the violin in mind. So, let's go to stringed instruments. And... I like this slinky violin. Oh, here you can see there is no folder with the name samples. It seems like everything is encoded in this single file. Let's bring it in. And... It's giving this option to select one of these. Let's go with the last one, which is the simplest one. And the last one is for strings. Let's try this soft string spurs. Oh, not that one. This one, uh, swells. So if you swallow it, and everything together sounds like this.
If we go back to the browser, we can see that Broadwood is available in EXS24, Contact and Decent Sampler formats. Then Winter Voices is available in Contact and Decent Sampler. And then Slinky Violin is available in Contact, SFZ and Decent Sampler format. This SFZ is what we are going to use in the next sample player. And that is the Esfusando or Svazando sample player. Here I have some of the SFC sample libraries from Piano Book. Let's try drums and perk, soft drums. This one dot SFC file is what we need to load in the sample player. There it is. I already have some MIDI clips lying here. So now I'm gonna hit play. If we click on the effects, we can see all the effects that can be applied. But unlike Decent Sampler, it won't be applied if we have the send signal at 0%. It's the amount of signal that should be sent into the effects. And finally, here is a tip that might save you from a lot of frustration. Sometimes some instruments might go really quiet because some of their parameters got reduced to zero. Now, in this case, the dynamics has gone down to its lowest value, which I didn't do. And it happened because of some automation that happened in the background that I did not initiate purposefully. We can see that if we right click on this dynamics knob, see this remove MIDI automation. It means that there is some MIDI automation happening in here. And this is something I didn't do. So I'm going to remove it. And just like that, Dynamics is free from any automation. Likewise, you can check other parameters too and make sure to remove any automation attached to them. And then one other thing that we can do is go into the preferences. Then under project, select MIDI and then uncheck this option. Zero controllers when play stops. Okay, and that's it for this video. Leave a like if you found it useful. Starting from the next video in the Cakewalk tutorial series, we will be doing some actual production. This is ADK and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!